Welcome uh, to worship today. So glad you're here. I'm Pastor Jeremy. Uh, we are worshiping today from our Sun Tree Campus Chapel. And the reason we are worshiping here is so we have the atmosphere that we are worshiping with you uh, in your home and for you to fully participate in worship today. In order to fully participate, uh, there are a couple things you need to prepare for. Uh, the first thing is there is a bulletin with all of the liturgy and the hymns that we'll be doing. Uh, that bulletin can be found on our webpage at adventbrevard.org. So if you haven't downloaded that, please go to our webpage and download the bulletin. We also will be celebrating communion together. So we're asking people if you want to do that with us to please get your best wine glass out, fill it with either wine or grape juice, or, and then get some type of crackers or bread to use. And you can place that uh, near you as we worship together. So if you need to do that, you can pause the video and do that now and then come back and we will begin our worship together. We begin with our traditional Easter greeting. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When you did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, your love was poured out on the world from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, for the water everywhere. You have bathed us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. You always satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given the honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. you. Let us pray. O oh God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith. Help us to see him in the mystery of his redeeming work. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear the word, God's word from the book of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 persons were added. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Next, we'll read Psalm 116 responsibly. Love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Shiloh laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, save my life. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Hear God's word from 1 Peter. If you invoke as, fa as father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, 
who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I wanted to have a song for our family activity time. And I picked this song because it's a scary time right now. You know, it's got to feel funny uh, to have everybody home from work, home from school, and to know that the reason this is true is because there's a virus that's very dangerous out there. and People are getting sick, and, and it's just kind of a scary time. And, and sometimes people wonder, um, where is God when all of these kind of things are going on? And I want to sing this song together because uh, it reminds us that God is with us, that God is for us. And if God is for us, um, there isn't anything that can harm us in any kind of way that makes any difference. That God's going to be with us now. God's going to be with us whether we're healthy or sick. And God's going to be with us for the rest of eternity. So I want to sing this song together. And there are motions for it. This song is called God is for me. Uh, who here knows the motions? Okay, do you, do you know the one? No, no, okay. So would you guys go on to stand up and help me? Okay. It's pretty easy. Um, but it goes like this. I'll just go through the motions one time. Looking out, it's a great big world. Where do I go? How do I fit in? Got to keep this one thing on my mind. The maker of all the universe is on my side. And if God is for me, who can be? Who can be against me? And then he is my strength. He is my friend forever. If God is for me, who can be? Who can be against me? Are you ready? Yes. Let's try it. All right. I'm glad I've got these wonderful ringers behind me. There you go. Yeah. 
The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now that on that same day, when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Clopas, Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in word and deed before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are. And how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Your eyes were kept from seeing him, from recognizing him. Uh, I have to admit the first, this may sound strange to you, but the first person I thought of um, when I read that is poor Thomas. You guys remember Thomas, right? Um, doubting Thomas, for all of history, was labeled Doubting Thomas just because he happened to be out getting groceries the first time Jesus appeared to his disciples. Um, Cleopas and his buddy were in the... Uh, close circle of the followers of Jesus. We know this because they were with Jesus in Jerusalem for his triumphal entry, and uh, it sounds like, anyway, they were there at least around during the Last Supper, and, uh, and after uh, the three days, uh, they left the house where everybody was locked up to go home to a mass, so they, they knew Jesus. They followed him. They were close. They were part of his team. And as they're walking... Jesus himself comes up to them and starts talking to them. 
and they don't recognize him? If history were fair, they would be labeled the Oblivious Brothers for the rest of history. Cleopas and whoever, the Oblivious Brother. Oblivious Cle Cleopas, can you say? Yeah. Uh, but no, uh, they get a pass. And, and uh, I'm thinking through this thinking, what were, what, what were they thinking? What were they looking at that they couldn't see Jesus? Um, what blinded them? Until I, until I really thought about it, and uh, if you've been through tragedy, if you've been through loss, if you've been through um, just that kind of deep, deep grief, and I don't know if any of us has been through grief like that, you know, uh, losing someone you love is, is excruciating, it's indescribably hard. Um, seeing your entire life blow up at the same time. Uh, I've never been through anything like that. And I know in my times of deepest grief and deepest loss, as I'm thinking through, what do I see? The cracks in the sidewalk. That's it. Um, if, if I even can muster the motivation to walk, um, you know what I'm saying? You just see the cracks in the sidewalk. You don't see anything else. And even that, you don't really see. It's just your brain automatically processing the cracks in the sidewalk so you don't fall on your face. You don't see anything um, when you're in that kind of deep grief. Uh, it's likely, with Emmaus being seven miles from Jerusalem, that uh, Cleopas and his buddy had made this journey many, many times. Um, but uh, this, I have to think, was the longest walk of their lives. This walk back from their entire lives being crushed. And uh, as Jesus came up to them, this wouldn't have been a strange thing, you know, uh, making that trip back and forth to Jerusalem. Uh, it was not always safe. There were bandits, that even in those days, uh, wild animals. And so it wouldn't have been at all strange for another Jew to come up and want to walk together, you know, their safety in numbers. So my guess is, uh, as they're walking along, they may have glanced back to make sure it wasn't a robber or a bandit. Um, but I guess I feel like uh, the reason they couldn't see Jesus is because um, they weren't seeing anything. They were so blinded by their grief, so blinded by their loss, um, that it was enough to just see the ruts and the pebbles and the roots and not fall in their face. If they could keep from falling in their face, that's probably about it. And can you hear, can you imagine their conversation? Uh, I think if you've been through stuff like this uh, or anything close, um, you know there's a lot of silence and then bursts of just painful processing. At least they had each other, right? And they were processing together as friends. How could this have happened? You saw what he did. You heard what he said. He was the Messiah. You know, how could this have happened? And then more ruts and rocks and pebbles and silence. And it's, uh, to me, a powerful and beautiful thing to see Jesus here, the risen Christ at work. You know, how he broke through. Because as you know, if you've been in the, this situation of deep sorrow, or you've tried to be with someone who's in this situation of, of deep sorrow, breaking through, I don't even know how that happens. Uh, but Jesus uh, was so wonderfully compassionate uh, in his breaking through to them. And he used two things. First, he used the word of God, spoken in the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, he just reminded them, got into the truth that was already in their hearts, and spoke the word uh, in the power of the Spirit. You remember later, um, as they were describing Jesus speaking to them, they felt it. Didn't our hearts burn within us? Because they heard that word of hope, that word of joy, and even on the road, in all of their sorrow, this word spoken in the power of the Spirit was starting to reach them. So Jesus used the word uh, in the power of the Spirit.
to break through. And then the thing that finally did break through, and this is something I did a little research on, and I'm not sure a lot of the Gospels make it sound like it was only the 12 that were there during the Last Supper. Uh, John kind of makes it sound like they might have been others. Uh, I kind of picture that the 12 were with Jesus at the table, but the whole room had his people there. And Jesus knew how much we would need his presence. And so uh, he instituted what we now call Holy Communion, the Holy Meal. And it was in that meal, that holy moment, where Christ is present in our breaking of the bread. That's what opened their eyes. That as Jesus was standing at the head of their table, doing what he had told the apostles, do this when you gather together and know that I'm with you. When you do this, when you break this bread, when you share this wine, remember me. Remember, I am with you always. And so Jesus broke the bread, and as he broke the bread and blessed it, boom, their eyes were opened, and they saw the risen Christ was with them. And they were so moved, so changed again, so lifted up with joy, so transformed that they, and this is really, we don't understand how crazy this is, uh, in the middle of the night, they walked seven miles back to Jerusalem because they had to tell their sisters and brothers, he's alive. Um, this is a kind of a cracks in the sidewalk time for us right now. Uh, it is scary. Uh, many people have had losses. All of us have had losses. Even though they're small ones, our lives are disrupted. You know, our schedules are disrupted. Um, we are afraid. Um, I think of this year for me, it's been a kind of a cracks in the sidewalk kind of year in some ways. Um, I am so grateful that Christ is with us. The risen Christ is with us. And I guess this is my prayer for myself and for all of us as a congregation. Um, that we will uh, hear, we'll open our minds, open our hearts, be open to this word of God uh, that we hear spoken in the power of the Spirit. Christ is risen. Christ is with us. We will hear it um, and let it burn in our hearts. And then as we receive today um, this meal, this holy meal, I know it's going to be Pastor Jeremy breaking the loaves, but I just want you to imagine that uh, Jesus is standing there before us. And, and as you see that bread broken, as you see that chalice lifted, um, realize he is surely here with us. Um, and I pray that our hearts will just burn uh, with passion for the fact that the risen Christ is with us, even in these cracks in the sidewalk moments. Uh, and with that burning in our hearts, my prayer is that it makes it past these doors. Um, that when we go out into the world, think of this as our run back to Jerusalem in the middle of the night. You know, we will uh, leave here um, filled with joy and hope um, and share the good news of the risen Christ in this challenging time. Amen.
around the world in confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all those who are in need. We pray for those hearts, those whose hearts are fervent with love for your gospel. Empower them to tell the story of your love in their lives and to show hospitality in response to his love. God of love, your mercy is great. We pray for wisdom in dealing with the broken systems we have inherited and that we continue, continue to perpetuate. Forgive us, Lord. Give our leaders the wisdom and vision to see that you have provided enough for all. Help the leaders of all nations to find creative ways to avoid fighting over limited resources. Save us from the cycles of scarcity and violence. God of love, your mercy is great. We pray for all who call upon your healing name. Send your people to bring you presence and your peace. Work through us to walk with those who are hungry, friendliness, despairing, and desiring healing in body and spirit. We lift before you those we know who have special needs this week, either aloud or silently now. God of love, your mercy is great. We pray for the faith-forming ministries of this church, and for those preparing for baptism, First Communion, confirmation, and membership, guide and inspire learners of every age and ability. God of love, your mercy is great. Create in our hearts a yearning to rest in your promise of eternal and resurrected life. Give us thankful hearts for those who have died, even as we look forward to the hope of new life with you. God of love, your mercy is great. Please join me in praying. God of all creation, we glory in your presence and trust each of these prayers to your loving care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them, them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Lamb of God who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, the earth and the sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for, your, for our salvation. In the night in which he betrayed our Lord, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, Give to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it all the drinks, saying, This cup is new covenant, poured out by my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat, this bread and drink this cup we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes Christ has died Christ is risen Christ will come again remembering therefore his good and gracious command his life-giving passion and death his glorious resurrection and ascension and the promise of his coming again we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, and we ask you to bless us with your word and Holy Spirit. Bless also these, your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace. We praise you for the forgiveness we have received in Christ, and we ask you to shape our lives so that we will live as your holy people and receive with joy, along with all your saints, the eternal inheritance you have prepared for us in Christ. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are God's gifts for us, God's people. All are welcome to partake of this holy meal. If you have communion for yourselves, you can commune each other by giving of the bread and saying, Body of Christ given for you, and the wine or grape juice, blood of Christ shed for you. We will commune ourselves as well, and please commune yourselves. But know this, all are hungry and thirsty, come eat and drink. The table is set and all are welcome. May the body and blood of our Lord risen Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you sent light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. We again, thank you so much for everyone who has sent in their offerings and their tithes. Uh, we know that it is a difficult time for everybody, and uh, we really appreciate those who can still give their regular offering to please do so. Uh, the mission and uh, vision of Advent Lutheran Church continues to go, and uh, we are continuing to do all the ministries that we can at this time. At the same time, we are doing everything we can to keep expenses down uh, as we are worshiping in this new and virtual way. You can uh, send in your offering to the church, to our Century Campus. You can also go online and learn how to uh, give online. Uh, we also have a giving app and giving by text. But again, thank you so much for everyone who has sent in our offerings already. And thank you uh, for those who will be doing that as well. We have uh, several Bible studies, uh, actually three Bible studies during the week. Uh, Zoom Bible studies you can be a part of. One is on Sunday mornings uh, by Rudy, uh, the Aloha Bible study. And then we have two on Wednesday nights, one by Pastor Dave and one by Pastor Rick. Uh, all that information is on our website, in the weekly emails, and also on our Facebook page. We continue uh, to lift up our food pantry ministry, which continues to be used 
uh, more and more. And if you didn't get a chance to look at Miss Joy, our Director of Youth and Family Ministry, uh, she did some wonderful, wonderful videos and children and family and youth lessons on Earth Day. And again, all of those videos can be found uh, on our website, adventbrevard.org. Now receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you, be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon your favor and give you God's peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.